The gym was a good vibe. For real. It's been probably, I don't even know how many, well, actually no, technically we had five coaches in the gym simultaneously. And I actually knew it was gonna be hopping today. So I had all of these like aspirations of having just like a crazy, you know, session, just go all ham. But my daughter, Joey, had other plans. <laughs> so today's lesson is about giving yourself the flexibility to just go with what the day is bringing from a energy recovery standpoint. I don't have a, I don't have a recovery tool that's gonna tell me that I was in the red today, but I'm pretty sure I was in the red today. <laughs> uh, and red meaning not good. My daughter, Joey, basically just, she just, she is either coming down with something or there's just so much going on. Like she's just a, bu a bundle of excitement and like energy and just having a, the hardest time falling asleep. I know there's people out there who resonate with that. Well, imagine being four years old and not knowing how to handle those emotions and those feelings. And she's just crying for us and running into our bedroom and waking up in the middle of the night and needing, needing things. And so my wife and I were up a lot last night. And um, anyhow, so I came to the gym, I was gonna do a combination of some, some Persist Perform and Persist Pump. It's kind of how I've been rolling these days, getting a little bit of uh, Olympic weightlifting in, just connecting with that again and um, working on some conditioning uh, formats that are coming up in the, in Q, Q1 of 2023. Can you believe it's almost the new year? Maybe as this goes out, it's already gonna be the new year. So yeah, just testing out some stuff, but um, I was kind of hoping for some big numbers, not big numbers, but just like feeling more confident on the snatch. And I was not, I was gonna back squat heavy, but that was not gonna happen. So I switched to a Smith machine squat and went for some higher reps, kept the uh, loads lower, but still hit some good effort. And maybe that's like a good takeaway for today is that, you know, the rep range, the rep range does define a little bit of like what the outcome of the training session will be. You know, you aim for like three to five rep ranges. Those are really good for like absolute strength building, top end strength, you know, more in that eight to 15 rep range, maybe really good for hypertrophy. But today I wanted to hit that three to five rep range on the back squat, work on something heavier and it just wasn't in the card. So I switched to a different rep range, not because I wanted it to be easier. I just wanted it to be a little safer. I still push to like a pretty high rate of perceived exertion RPE. I pushed my back squats on the Smith machine all the way until I was basically one rep away from failure. I could tell because the speed of the bar had slowed down significantly. And my position was fine, but you know, the bar speed was so slow, that's when I chose to stop. And each set was like 15 or 14 reps. Um, and that just allowed me to load up with significantly lower weight and still execute a high effort. So that's a really good tip and tool for you. If you're coming into the gym and you're like, oh, I was supposed to hit three sets of three in the back squat today at 90% or 85% of my one RM, you know, that has an intent, but if you don't feel up for it, then doing three sets of three at 60% is also not necessarily gonna give you an effort level that's gonna induce some change. Probably just gonna make it, you know, sort of like, not a waste of your time, but certainly not the impact that you're looking for. So you can change rep ranges and still push more safely when your nervous system brain and your body are tired from maybe a sleepless night. So that was the main takeaway. And then I went back to um, any of you ATS fans out there, Awaken Training Series, one of the original functional bodybuilding programs that I ever released, actually the original. There was a uh, training format back then that I really loved and I used it a lot in my preparation for CrossFit comp competing and really because it was such a good tool for learning how to pace and do conditioning well. Right, because so many people like, they love the idea of doing circuits with rowing and burpees and deadlifts, but they just don't know how to pace it and they come out like crazy fast at the beginning and then it's a suffer fest for 10, 15 minutes 
And nobody wants that. That's not making you better. That's increasing injury risk. It's make, making your movement quality suck. So how do you learn how to pace yourself better? How do you learn how to start at a sustainable pace or even get faster as you go in conditioning workouts? And that was the design that I put together, which was what I was doing today with my conditioning, which is essentially four movements where you perform each movement with a, a, a 15 second break in between each movement. So it's like kettlebell snatch, rest 15 seconds. Lunges, rest 15 seconds. Muscle up or pull up, whatever you wanna do, whatever your skill level allows for, rest 15 seconds, and then get on the bike for 60 seconds, a minute of biking. You're gonna do this for five rounds. At the end of each bike, you get a good long 60 second rest to start again. Not a full recovery, but look, it's not like doing five rounds for time, it's doing five sets of intervals. Now here's the catch. Every round you get on the bike, you have to go faster than the last round. So I intentionally started slow and I encourage everyone to start slow. And by the end, I was pushing my pace to the best of my ability and I actually had negative splits on every single round, which is the, which is the sign that, hey, I'm in control of my pacing, my movement quality was good. And so I learned that by doing this week after week after week. And on maybe the third or fourth week of that progression, we might start to remove those 15 second rests. And maybe on the last week of the progression, we might take away all the rest periods and it's just five rounds for time, but you still have to increase your pace. This is a great way to learn proper pacing if you're interested and you love to do conditioning with different types of tools, body weight, weights, gymnastics, cardio, you name it. So that's coming in February uh, to persist perform. It's a relic from ATS, all of you ATS fans out there. And so that's how I did it. Olympic lift, do some bodybuilding type movements, some pump style supersets, a pump finisher, little calves, little quads, you saw that. And of course that perform conditioning piece where we're gonna learn how to increase our pace as we go rather than fly and die, <laughs> which you don't wanna be that person because that's never fun and you always finish last and you got people clapping for you when you're drooling on yourself. <laughs> we don't wanna be that person. So hope you got something from this episode. If you like it, hit the hit the big thumbs up button and I'll see you next time.